singing this morning? <laughs> All right, just before the choir sings, do we have any first-time visitors in our church? Is there anybody who's here for the very first time? We have a little bit we'd like to give you along with the welcome card. Anybody first time? Okay, great. It is great to have you here this morning. Isn't it great that we can sing songs about being saved this morning? Amen. It's exciting, and it should be exciting. At this time, the choir is going to sing, Do You Know the Story? with the help from some of our young choir members. Amen. Right. <coughs>
going to sing this one by singing the grace of Jesus.
Amen. Sunday night. Also, 
on the last weekend in January, January 27th, we have uh, training by uh, uh, the uh, founder and, and uh, uh, I guess you could call him head guy, I guess, head honcho, I don't know. But anyway, uh, Dale Atkins will be here. He's going to be doing training for the RU. Uh, you might say, well, I'm not really uh, going to commit to something like that, but uh, it'd be good for you to come to the training to see how it works and how it functions. And you never know, the Lord may just call you to be involved in that type of a ministry, helping those with addictions. And uh, so he'll be here, he'll be doing an RU program on Friday night. He'll be doing training on Saturday. We're providing lunch. It's free, you don't have to pay for that. Be sure to sign up though in the foyer so we know how many are gonna be here. And uh, he'll be preaching on Sunday. He'll be doing the adult Sunday school. So all adult Sunday school classes will be in here on that weekend. And uh, be able to, he's going to be doing the lesson, getting past your pass. And so sometimes we need some help doing that, that's for sure. Well, uh, I think that's enough announcements. Let's read in uh, Luke chapter 5, in uh, verse 36. It says, He spake also a parable unto them, No man putting a piece of new garment uh, uh, upon an old, if otherwise, then both the new maketh it rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, uh, else the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put in the new bottles, and both are preserved. No man also having drunk old wine straightway uh, desireth new, for he saith the old is better. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to be together this morning. Thank you, Lord, that uh, we can experience new life through our faith in Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful, Lord, when we get saved, everything is brand new. And I'm thankful, Lord, that the old life is gone and it's passed away. And we need to live our life in light of uh, the newness of Christ in us. I pray if there's anyone here this morning who's not sure they're saved, uh, Lord, that the Spirit of God will speak to them of the necessity to be born again. And uh, Lord, I pray that we get saved this morning. So bless us now as we study the Word of God. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A tremendous passage here in these four verses that are uh, we just read through. Jesus Christ is basically presenting a parable uh, to those that were there and certainly presents it to us uh, this morning. Uh, Jesus had been questioned over and over again as he begins his earthly ministry and continues his earthly ministry. He'll be questioned about why did his disciples uh, fast. He would be questioned about uh, why did he take time to eat with publicans and sinners. And so Jesus comes along and presents to them this parable about the new not fitting in to the old. Uh, the Jew were, would not defile themselves with sinners, uh, but they were committed to all the ritual of the Old Testament, and they were trying to fit Jesus into that mold uh, to follow their example. Uh, Jesus did not come to fit into the mold of the Old Testament law. Jesus Christ came to fulfill the Old Testament law. And uh, they did not understand that, and so they would confront him about his actions, his teachings that were contrary to what they were holding on to. Uh, and so he teaches them this parable. Remember this, whenever you read a parable in the Bible, uh, the parable is basically setting forth one main lesson. There's not a multitude of lessons to learn, there's been many different ways that we can interpret Scripture, but Scripture has one main interpretation of it. And so the new garment going into the old uh, is very clear because the new will shrink and the old is already shrunk and it will create a tear and ruin both the old and the new. So uh, he's talking about the effects of trying to fit something that uh, is different and something that is new into that which is old. 
when you talk about the wine, they would have the wine skins that they would put the wine in and the wine, uh, the skins would dry out, they would be stretched out. And then if you put new in there, then they would try to, do, as the wine would expand, uh, there was no give in the wine skins and so they would rip and they would burst and the wine would be lost. And so with both of these parables in reference to the garment and reference to the wine, he is presenting the fact that if you try to fit the new into the old, you're going to damage the new and you're going to destroy the old. And so he, we need to understand that the new does not fit into it. This is where many Christians get themselves in trouble. Because what happens is we get saved and then we try to figure out how we can fit our new life in Christ into everything was in our life before we got saved. And it just does not work uh, because everything about Jesus Christ is different than what the world is and what is presented to us. All of it ha what happens when they struggle to try to fit their new life into the old life uh, they get discouraged. Uh, they don't feel right about it. Uh, their friends certainly don't uh, uh, understand it. Uh, their friends will act funny. Uh, they'll develop a guilt. And uh, I just I just know when we first got saved, you know, we'd go in the room. My brother-in-law would get up and walk out of the room because he wouldn't stay in the room with me. And I wasn't preaching at him or anything. I just said, you rotten sinner, you need to be smiling. <laughs> They just feel funny around you because they know you are different. You're not the same person you were before you got saved. And what happens as we try to fit our new life in with our old life, everything is dysfunctional. Nothing, nothing connects. And as a result of it, it causes conflicts. Many times what happens, a person that new, is newly saved, we end up quitting going to church because of the conflicts that have been trying, that have developed uh, many times, uh, they'll just stop altogether uh, living the Christian life because of the fact it's, it's too hard to try to make the Christian life compatible with the unsaved life. It just does not function. And so uh, we need to understand this parable this morning on some things that we have new that just absolutely does not fit in with the old. And uh, it will help us to be able to grow in our faith and to be able to see God moving in a great way. And I thought, first of all, as far as the new doesn't fit in the old, I thought about new life. You know, when you get saved, it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And it's very clear, he follows up and says, old things are passed away, Amen. behold all things have become new. And so we need to acknowledge that if you're a Christian, you got saved, you're, you're not the person you were. Amen. And uh, God has made your life completely new. And uh, certainly you cannot try to fit it into the old life. I'm thankful that my wife and I, we got saved. We just started being faithful to church. We went to church. It was every service started out one service and two service and three service and four service. I mean, we just were there. And then God called us to preach and we took off and went to Bible college. And, and I'll tell you, it was great just being in Bible college around other people that are like-minded, that are pursuing God and wanting to serve Lord uh, full time and all this that and the other. Um, that lifestyle that we had was absolutely, completely different than the lifestyle we had before we got saved. And certainly uh, it was a blessing to be able to experience God creating in us and renewing us and making us what he wanted us to be. And so you have to give up on the old so that you can grow in the new. Galatians chapter six and verse 15 says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision uh, availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but here's the key but a new creature. And we need to live in light of being a new creature in Christ. In uh, Romans chapter five and verse one, Paul says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God Amen. through our Lord Jesus Christ. And literally justification is uh, a, a way of just stating that just as if I never said, 
just as if I never was lost. Uh, so as a new creation, we are in the Lord and we are completely new. I uh, know, uh, uh, and listen, it's, and you live your life as if you never were a sinner because God cleans us and God delivers us and God molds us into what he wants us to be. And so I realize this, that the life that we have as a Christian is new life. Uh, we need not be embarrassed about being a Christian. We need not hide the fact that we are a believer in Christ. Yes, it makes us different. And yes, the world doesn't understand it, but we must live our life out as a new creation so that others will be able to see what God can do in our life. Not only are we a new creation, but we have a new walk. In, in Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, Paul says, walk in newness of life. And so now that you're saved and you're a child of God, you live differently, you walk differently. You know, when I got uh, married, my life drastically changed. Uh, you know, I didn't do the things I used to do. I didn't go hang out with the guys that I used to hang out with. I had some friends of mine and, oh, Mike, man, you know, man, you're married now. How come you don't ever come and hang out? I said, well, I want to hang out with you. I got a beautiful <laughs> wife. You know? I'm not going to you crazy. And uh, I said, I'm not going to sit here and look at you all night long. And uh, so... Uh, a new walk. I, I, I live different. When you're single, you live differently than you do when you're married. Uh, well, when you're unsaved, you live differently than you do when you are saved. It's a, it's a new walk. You live a different way and you live for the glory of God. There's a different focus because of the fact that you're walking with the Lord. As Enoch walked with God, he was not for the Lord took him. He had a completely different commitment and lifestyle than everyone during his time uh, of his life. And so we have new life because we're a new creation. We have new life because we have a new walk, but we have new life because we're a new man. Amen. Uh, that's why Paul talks about putting off the old man. Ephesians 4.24, he says that you put, off the, put on the new man, which after God has created in righteousness and true holiness. And so because of the fact that you're new in the Lord, uh, there is a different relationship and lifestyle that develops. Look over in Colossians, uh, Colossians chapter uh, uh, 3 and verse 10 helps us to see this, uh, this concept of the newness of new man, a new individual. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10, notice as being in Christ, we have a new understanding. In Colossians chapter 3 and verse 10, it says, And put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So there's a new understanding about life. It's a new understanding based on the knowledge of who Christ is, who God is. People live their life and have absolutely no idea whatsoever about God's love and God's grace, God's power, uh, God's intercession for us, God's uh, uh, interacting with us. They had no idea about that. But as a believer in Christ, as you put on the new man, you gain new understanding about yourself. You new, gain new understanding about life. You gain new understanding about who God is. And it's all based on the fact that, wait a minute, I'm no longer Mike Weigel lost and going to hell. I'm Mike Weigel who is a child of God and I have a father in heaven who cares for me and loves me. And so I'm going to live my life gaining comprehension of who he is and how he interacts in my life. So I see there's not only a new relationship, but I mean a new understanding. There is a new relationship. Notice in verse 11. He said, Wherefore, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian or Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Amen. All these divisions that we allow to hinder our relationship with one another are gone when we put on Christ. When we live in the Lord, our relationships with each other 
are based on not our differences racially or nationally or economically or socially. Our, our relationships are not based on those things. Our relationship is based on who Jesus Christ is. Amen. And because Christ is the Son of God and He is the King of Kings, and he is the Lord of Lords. Our relationship with him enables us to have a proper relationship with each other. And uh, I often do it when I do marital counseling. I deal with the uh, relationship of a husband and wife as a triangle. And basically the wife and the uh, husband's at the bottom of the triangle as they draw close to God who's at the top of the triangle. It is a natural thing as they draw close to God they're drawing closer to each other. Right. May I say that's the way it is in our Christian relationship. Right. And where conflicts come and difficulties come is because of the fact uh, we may be running away from the Lord. We may not be committing ourselves to Christ. But I can guarantee you this, as we as believers in Christ draw close to God, it draws us closer to each other. And so the new man gives me new understanding. It gives me a new relationship, but also gives me in Colossians 3, new emotions. Notice in Colossians chapter 3 and verse 12 says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, longsuffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. So new emotions, a uh, new stirring of God in my life because of the fact that God loves me, enables me to love someone else. Because God has forgiven me, it gives me the ability to forgive others also. And so my emotions are brought in check based on my relationship with Christ that enables me to be merciful. It enables me to be kind and humble. It enables me to be long-suffering, forbearing. Forbearing just means to put up with each other. Amen. Sometimes we've got to put up with each other. But anyway, it says forbearing one another. Why? If anybody has a quarrel, you can resolve that quarrel because of the fact that Christ has forgiven us, we follow the example of the Lord. So we have new emotions. Notice in Colossians 3 and 14, we have new love. It says, and above all these things, put on charity, which is the word agape, which is the sacrificial love. And he says, above all these things, put on charity, which is a bond of perfectness. And so, you know, the amazing thing is this. Our relationship with the Lord enables us to love uh, when people are unlovely. It enables us to be able to be sacrificial in our love and connection with others uh, because of the fact uh, that he has made us new and we put on the new man. So I see a new love. And then I see in verse 15 of Colossians 3, a new peace. Notice in verse 15, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To which also you have been, uh, you are called into one body and be ye thankful. And so a new peace. So we, the world tries to find peace. It's always looking to all kinds of different things. It, it may be in more relationships. It may be addictions. It, it may be just a, aggressive hatred and attacking. Uh, but that, no, we have a new way of living because God has saved us and delivered us out of this world. We can put on the new man, which is created in the image of the Son of God. And because of that, we can allow God's peace to rule. In other words, take charge of our life. We don't have to be out of control and anxious about life because of the fact we have new life that is in Christ. So I see where there's new life. I see that there's a new master. In Matthew chapter 23, Jesus helps us to understand this about having a new master. And uh, it's good for us to be reminded of that. That, you know, uh, you know, in the when before you get saved, the devil is your boss. And the world is the one who manipulates and controls you. But in Matthew chapter 23, in verse 8, 
Jesus said this, but be ye not called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren. Uh, I think it would be well for us to remind ourselves of that, that Christ is the master. Amen. We're brethren. Uh, he says, call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Uh, neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. And so he says, and he that is greatest among you, you shall be your servant. And uh, so this matter of having a new master, what is that? It's a new identification. In, John, in Matthew chapter 6, in verse 24, Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. So here's the conflict. You get saved, you're a new person in Christ, you have a new life in Christ, but there is a conflict because who is going to be your boss? Amen. Who's going to direct your life? Who's going to control who you are? So I see identification of the new based on the fact there's an opposition of the old. And the old life doesn't like to give up. You know, the flesh, we have three enemies, the flesh, the world, and the devil. Amen. The flesh tells us, this is what the flesh speaks to us, be immoral, enjoy life, get all the gusto that you can get in life, just don't worry about it, you can do whatever you want. And the flesh just appeals to us constantly to try to draw you back into that lifestyle, that immoral lifestyle, when Jesus says, be ye holy, for I'm holy. And so there's a conflict. Understand that as a new person, a new believer in Christ, there is going to be that conflict. There is going to be that opposition where the flesh tries to get you to defile yourself. Uh, opposition of the old stays on. The world comes along and it tells you get all you can. Just with greed or whatever, just consume everything that you can. And Jesus says you're to give. Given it shall be given unto you, good measure, uh, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto thy bosom. The concept of living as a Christian is completely contrary to the lifestyle of the world and of the flesh. And then the devil, he comes along and he tells you, that's all right, you need to be vengeful. You need to get that. You, you have every right to get even with that person. The devil comes along and tells you, you know, it's all right to hate people. And the reality is Jesus tells us that we are to love one another. Uh, Jesus tells us that we are to pray for those that despitefully use us. Uh, we, don't, we don't set up ourselves to be the judge of others and try to condemn others because of the fact that Jesus Christ came into this world to save sinners who are condemned. That was me. That was you. And people who are without Christ, they will be hateful. They will be vengeful. Uh, they will be immoral. Uh, they'll do whatever they can to get ahead in this world. But wait a minute. We're a new creature in Christ. We have a new boss. We have a new master. So we live according to what he tells us to do rather than what the world tells us to do. So there's identification of the new because of the opposition of the old. And that uh, is experiencing the recognition of sin. James 4.17 says, To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And if, if, you know, if you know that Jesus is the master and he is the boss and you refuse to obey him, you understand you're in sin. Amen. When you disobey God's word, you're in sin. Uh, it really comes down to who, whose orders are you going to follow? Are you going to follow the enticement of the world, the flesh, and go after that? Or are you going to follow the instruction and the love and the care of God to direct your life into something new? Bob Jones Sr. years ago said this, to do less than your best is sin. And so what are, what are you going to do for this new year to live out your life in, fact, in reference to being a new life with a new master? And then I thought of this. There's new goals. Look over in Philippians chapter 3. I love the Apostle Paul, uh, his writings, because of the fact that he uh, gives us great insight, but also gives us great instruction for the future. New goals. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 13. 
It says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God Amen. in Christ Jesus. And I just thought new goals. What are your short-term goals? Uh, I like to set goals for myself. I know when I came here 28 years ago, I had short-term goals that I wanted to accomplish as a pastor coming here. I had long-term goals. And uh, well, I've seen God do, fulfill many, many goals in my life. And I have goals right now for my life personally. I have goals for the church. What is it God wants us to accomplish and, and to be able to achieve uh, in the short term? And some short, here's some, I just jotted down some things about goals that are good goals in your life as a believer in Christ. Uh, number one, I put down, read your Bible, study your Bible. you got to be a student of the Word of God. And uh, you gotta, you got to be faithful in reading your Bible. Pray daily. I don't know what your prayer life is like. I don't know how much time did you take to pray this morning before you came to church. And uh, praying for God to be faithful to every church service. And uh, I didn't say one church service. I said every church service. And the reason is this. Every church service is different. Amen. Every church service is designed to meet a different need in the believer's heart. Each church service is evangelistic in nature. And, and if you miss a church service, you are missing out on major significant instruction that will help you in your Christian life to be able to live out this new man. I put down, not only that, but be baptized. If you haven't been baptized, we're going to do baptisms on February the 11th. I think that's what the date is. It's the second Sunday in February. We're going to do baptisms. If you've not been baptized since you've been saved, uh, then uh, see me, we'll take care of that. Join the church. Amen. Uh, it's, a, it's always interesting how long some people come to church before they join the church. Uh, here 22 years and then you join. Amen. But, uh, <laughs> you need to join the church. Uh, 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 you need to begin to eliminate wrong things in your life. Good goal for the new year. Whatever is holding me up and hold me back from walking with God and serving the Lord. A short-term goal is, God, help me get this thing out of my life. Uh, help me get victory over this. I thought about short-term go uh, goals. I thought about long-range goals. Long-range goals that you can focus on is the fact of maybe being a helper in Sunday school. Uh, you know, may not see yourself in Sunday school right now. But, hey, God can take your life and bless you. And I remember I went to Bible college. I never taught a Sunday school class. I never preached in church. I went off to Bible college. I came home for Christmas. And, and a, a, one of the men in the church was a fifth grade Sunday school teacher for boys. And uh, he said, Brother Wagon, you know, you've been in Bible college. You're a man of God. You need to come preach to my you know, uh, fifth grade Sunday school class. I thought, oh, no, that was a nervous wreck. I said, I got to go preach these fifth grade boys. And uh, I went in there. I'll never forget. He said, hey, young, man, young man, you need to listen to Brother Wagon here. Uh, he is a man of God. He walks with the Lord. And he has a message from God for you today. And I thought, man, who did you talk to? <laughs> And I taught that class, and, and uh, I, I'm so thankful that the Lord allowed me to do that. I never saw myself as a helper in Sunday school. I felt God's call in my life. I never saw myself in that mode. Uh, how about being not just a helper, but being a teacher in Sunday school? Um, how about helping out on Wednesday night program for the children's program? Um, how about one day being a deacon in the church? Yeah. Um, what about one day being a pastor or missionary? Sometimes we don't see ourselves in those roles. What long-term goals God can't well open up doors uh, to use you? I wrote down some other things. The RU program, you might see yourself being used in that program. Nursery. Man, those babies are not for me. Amen. <laughs> Need some women to go in there and take care of those babies. Uh, soul winning. You know, God blesses soul winning. I, there just is a, I'm just trying to say this. 
as a believer in Christ, I need to be setting goals in my life as Paul did. He said, I haven't arrived. In other words, I haven't done everything that I could possibly do. I haven't done everything God's called me to do. But I need to forget what is behind. Forget the old. The reality is 2023 is gone. And whatever you didn't do in 2023, you're not going to do it in 2023. It's never coming back. And so you need to let the old be gone. Amen. And look at what God has for you in the future. Who knows? You might be a Christian school teacher. We're always looking for teachers. And if you walk in the Lord with the Lord and you can add two plus two makes four, you're qualified for us. Amen. <laughs> but anyway, you never know. I, I came across this quote. I didn't put it on the screen. It's short. Listen to this. Goals are motivators to change. Goals are motivators to change. If you do not set any goals in your life to live this new life that God has given you, uh, I'm going to tell you, you're never going to achieve it. Because if you haven't set the goal, you're not going to be motivated to accomplish that goal. And so Paul's goals in verse 14, he says, I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's a pretty good goal. I want, to, I want to live my life so when I come to the end of my life, I can testify the fact that my life fulfilled the high calling of God for his will to be accomplished. And so goals, we, not only are we have new goals, but I think we have to focus on having a new home. And uh, we are just passing through here. Uh, we're not, not going to be here forever. 2 Peter chapter 3 and uh, verse 13 says this, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. We have a new home. Abraham sojourned in the land. You read Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, Abraham was not looking for a place to settle in. He was looking for a place that was taken into that promised land. He was looking for the place where uh, the uh, city with, whose uh, f uh, founder and creator and builder was God himself. He was looking beyond where he was in the world in which he lived. And I thought of this. We are sojourners in this land. We are looking for our new home in heaven. We are living for the purpose of one day getting into the presence of God to be able to enjoy eternity with him and with our loved ones. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe in also in me. Amen. In my Father's house are many mansions. Right? Some of these corrupt translations change it. In my Father's house are many rooms. Well, if you want a room, have a room. I'm going for a mansion. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we have a new home. We have a new goal. We have a new life. So the old, listen, the new doesn't fit in with the old. It has no place in the old. Everything is brand new to the Christian. I'm going to, I put these verses on the screen for you because I want to bring this thing to a close and just thinking how much better our life is in Christ Jesus. In uh, uh, Luke 5, 36, where we're in Texas, Jesus said, no man putteth a piece of new garment in an old. So don't take your new life and try to plug it in the old. It's like taking a square peg and trying to put it in a round hole. Uh, you might damage it, you might break it up, you may chop off the corners just to make it get in that round, but that's not the way it's designed to function. Amen. And you have to destroy both in order to make it work. So in our text in verse 37, Jesus said, No man putteth new wine in the old bottles. And so how do we approach this? First of all, Psalm 34 and verse 8 says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Please don't forget that as a believer in Christ, taste and see that the Lord is good. Everything he has for us as a believer, as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus is good for us. And listen, if you get a hold of it, 
and you experience the goodness of God, you'll never let go. I'll guarantee you that. I mean, God has done so many things miraculously in my life. I have found that God is better than what's in the world. Jesus is greater than what is in the world. And whatever the world and the flesh and the devil may throw my way and say, oh, taste this. Oh, experience this. I have to look at it and say, no, sir, turn and run away from it because Jesus Christ is better than it all. Amen. Hebrews 1.4 says, Being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name they, than they. His name is the name above all names. Amen. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 9 says, But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation, though we thus speak. And I believe you have to you have to acknowledge that in your your heart and your life that there are better things that you can have and you can enjoy because you're a Christian. Uh, in Hebrews chapter seven, in verse nineteen, it says, "For the law made nothing perfect, but the bringing in of a better hope did, by which we draw nigh unto God." For years, men. And women, boys and girls, tried to live by the law of God and failed desperately. But Jesus Christ came into this world and died on the cross for us to give us a better hope. In Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 22, it says, By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Uh, in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6, says, but now hath he obtained a more excellent ministry by how much also he is a mediator of a better covenant which was established upon better promises. Everything about Jesus is better. The Christian life is better than what this world is. Uh, your relationship with believers is better than your relationship with the unsaved. To please don't allow the devil to trip you up and tell you that's okay. You might, you're saved, you believe, you're going to heaven. You can live however you want, just enjoy the things of the world. No, 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 Jesus is better. Amen. Hebrews eleven sixteen 16 says, But now they desire a better country, that is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. I tell you, I'm not looking to uh, be in a different town or city here on this earth. I'm looking to get to heaven. Amen. Amen. Then in Hebrews uh, chapter 11 and verse 40, it says, God hath provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be, uh, should not be made perfect. Then Hebrews chapter 12 and 24 says, And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of evil. You understand that no matter what you study in the scriptures in reference to life, it's always better with God. Amen. Whatever you talk about in life, it's always better with Jesus Christ. So why would we throw it away? Why would we take this new life that God has given us why would we take that and try to fit it into some, some corrupt, immoral type of lifestyle and then live miserably? I'll tell you one thing. It's always great to be uh, walking with the Lord and knowing this. My life, I don't have to try to fit my life in to what the world is. I don't have to. Listen, as a church, we don't have to try to live our life and do ministry in a way that the world is accepting of it. We're different than the world. We're different than everything else. To God be the glory that he has called us out of those things. And he has given us everlasting life. The new does not fit into the old. So I ain't going to try. I'm just going to hold on to it. Amen. And enjoy my new life in Christ. Let's pray. Father, we come to you. We thank you so much for your grace. We thank you that Jesus Christ makes all things new. And I'm thankful that our faith in you, Lord, is sufficient to secure us and direct us and enable us uh, to live in a new home, a new place in heaven. 
And so I pray this morning, if there's someone watching on live stream, someone here in the building that's not sure they're saved, I pray the devil would be bound. I pray his voice would not be heard. I pray that the enticement of the world and the flesh would not overwhelm them, but they might be able to see the value of surrendering their life completely to Jesus Christ and Christ alone. And I pray you'd save them this morning. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand. We're going to sing a song of invitation. And we're going to be singing, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And I'm glad that we have a friend in Jesus Christ. If you need to pray, why don't you come and pray this morning? Not sure you're saved? Come, we'll take the Bible and show you how to be saved today. Be able to experience this new life that comes through faith in Jesus Christ. What a friend. sticking closer than a brother. And Lord, we thank you for the new life we have in you. Lord, for the new hope we have, for the new song you've put in our heart. And Lord, that we have a new direction that we can live in our lives. And Lord, I pray that as we leave here this, this afternoon, that Lord, you would just help us to be a light in this world. And Lord, you, you've placed a great responsibility, a privilege to be a light in this dark world. And Lord, may we look for opportunities to share the glorious good news and to tell others how they too can experience new hope and new life in Jesus Christ. Dismiss us now with your blessing. Bring us back this evening ready to hear from you once again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.